Welcome to Policy Matters Season 3, Episode 3. Policy Matters is a video chat series between Terry Tallon of the McCormick Center and a guest thought leader in early childhood policy. Our guest for this season is Marika Cox Mitchell, Deputy Executive Director for Early Learning Systems for NACI, the National Association for the Education of Young Children. In Episode 3, Marika and Terry explore how power to the profession aligns with state systems. Good morning. This is Terry Tallon with Marika Cox Mitchell, and we're just excited to be here for the third uh, session of the policy video chat having to do with power to the profession. And so this is our third in the series, our first policy chat, which is still available online, uh, introduced the topic of power to the profession. Our second policy chat focused on compensation issues, and this, our third policy chat, is going to focus on how Power to the Profession engages, works with, supports uh, the work of state professional development systems. And so I just want to ask Marika to get us started about how have the state professional development systems and system leaders been engaged to date in the power to the profession? Sure. First, just want to say thank you for um, providing this opportunity for us to have these open conversations and pretty much model what we want others to do in the field. Um, power to the profession is an opportunity for us as early childhood educators to define the profession on our own terms. And to do that, we need to have some really open frank conversations and you've provided many opportunities for us us to do so. Um, Policy of the profession has involved uh, state leaders, uh, state policymakers in multiple ways. One is first we have uh, NAYC affiliates um, engaged in this work, ensuring that they are building relationships, looking at the lessons learned they have from their perspective to inform decisions we're making um, at a national level. We have Cormac, National Governors Association, um, and others serving as a part of the Policy of the Profession Stakeholders uh, Group. And that group is informing Policy of the Profession and making sure that Policy of the Profession is also elevated in conversations with state, like National Registry Alliance is a a good Mm -hmm. example of a, a system that is currently focused on workforce uh, development in states. And so we have provided multiple opportunities at national level as well as the state and local levels to ensure that the decisions we were making certainly aligns with what works best, but also noting that ask for change if we too aren't willing to change and that power to the profession as the decisions are being made are forcing us all, including NAYC, to look in the mirror and say, what can we do better and what can we change? Yeah. Well, thank you. Um, I think I mentioned at our last policy chat that I had the opportunity to um, lead a discussion about power to the profession at our, our steering committee of the professional development system for early childhood in Illinois. And um, there's, it's been a really interesting experience because People have had varying um, levels of knowledge and involvement uh, in power to the profession. Many people had responded to the decision cycle um, inquiries as individuals, and yet um, we really hadn't thought deeply about it from uh, the representation of the system itself. And so we, uh, a couple of things have happened, and I, I bring this up because I think it's kind of a model for how things might happen or should happen in other states, um, is that uh, we've had, the first place of impact in doing this was that we wanted our strategic plan to be proactive about being involved in the process. And so we've always had a committee that had to do with being kept apprised of um, trends in the field. But this time in our strategic planning process that just happened to to be, you know, coincide with um, power to the professions uh, discussion that we started having at the state PDAC level, Professional Development Advisory Council, was that 
we want to be proactive in not just being aware of trends, but helping to shape the direction. And so I think a really positive thing that has come out of this is that we are going to continue meeting with those who are interested and formulate a response from the state professional de development system perspective and share that with power to the profession, you and others um, in, in that way. And it made me realize that um, there's different perspectives depending what hat you wear. And I can speak to that personally from the point of view that I've responded to each of the decision cycles, both as an individual also representing the McCormick Center, but I hadn't really rep represented the broader state system perspective. So that's why I asked you about how state PD systems are involved, because I think it's really important that they uh, are a part of the, the decision making and um, iterative process that you designed for power to the profession. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, we recognize that there is good work done in the field, but um, in um, this measure to advance as a unified profession, we will certainly build on what works well. And state uh, PD systems have had some really great lessons learned, can um, share with us where they felt the gaps were, um, and also point to where we need to um, focus to improve the workforce. And so we are definitely using their perspective. And yes, some have responded um, as a collective and others as um, individuals. And this is an all hand on deck moment. And so all perspectives are welcomed in the task force, um, including NAUIC, um, will be looking at all perspective to make the unifying um, definitions for the profession. You know, one of the things that came to light is we um, were talking in a follow-up session around power to the profession was the issue about the nomenclature. Wow. And um, I'm wondering, you know, if this is something that you've had feedback from other uh, state systems that uh, the idea of everyone being an educator, even though at different levels, one, two, and three, was a little like how our field got started where everyone was called a teacher regardless of their preparation. And so um, I know that that is an issue that was, you know, happily discussed at a meeting we had um, earlier in the week. And I'm wondering what, uh, how, how has that decision been received or that, that proposal for early educator one, two, and three? So we're in the middle of that process right now. Uh, mm -hmm. the first draft uh, was released by the task force and we're seeking input on that first draft. Um, and so we're still going through the initial quantitative as well as qualitative uh, feedback. Mm -hmm. I can just share some of the feedback we're hearing more from the qualitative side. Uh, it's about making sure that each level um, has clear responsibilities being very um, open about where those responsibilities overlap, but at the same time being clear about where the boundaries exist um, within the scope of practice, both for the each level as well as the preparation programs. And so particularly level two, the distinction between level two and three, mm -hmm. uh, as articulated in the first draft of decision cycles, three, four, and five, is where we're having more conversations. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And I mean, here's where I might get a little provocative because this was a thought that occurred to me from the conversations that I've been a part of, which I'm just thrilled. I mean, because that's what we want. We want everyone to really be connected um, and participate and hear and feel like they're, they're heard, um, they're engaged. And that's definitely happened with the state team work um, in Illinois. But one of the things that I was struck by is most of the professional development system work at the state level, career lattices, have really gone uh, along the route of numbers, one, two, three, maybe, you know, more than one, two, three, and have not really distinguished those levels by roles. And yet what I was hearing 
from my colleagues um, is that they want power to the profession to do that. Right. And so it's kind of like an interesting thing to me because I'm like all about how do we align? How do we make sure that we're connected? Where do we see our state system relative to this national work? But in some ways, it's like this hard piece about distinguishing preparation and qualifications related to responsibilities and roles should come at the national level. And so it's that balancing act um, that I'm just so aware is a, at the heart of some of these struggles around nomenclature and leveling. But I just, I thought it was just really interesting because what I was hearing was a, a, this desire for NAOIC or power to the profession to make that move to being really clear in terms of the nomenclature that goes along with those different competencies and different scope of responsibility. Absolutely. And so in this, again, this is just the first draft, uh, because nomenclature means so many different things in so many uh, communities as it's currently used, it, the task force decided to stay with the ECE1, ECE2, ECE3 label mm -hmm. and be relatively agnostic right now. Um, they may decide to rethink that strategy as they get more feedback from the public, but felt like for this moment in time, using existing labels would um, derail the process and not have our uh, experts in the field look at what's behind those labels, which is really the depth of the preparation as it relates to the competencies as well as the responsibilities. Well, thank you, Marika. And I'm sure that people who are uh, tuning in to this video chat need to know that it's an open process, that nothing is written in stone yet. Um, and hearing you say that things are open for revisiting, I think is a really important message. Uh, so I thank you for that openness and encourage people to get involved and to embrace these issues, not just as individuals, but within the workforce development work that they may be engaged in at their state, bring these issues forward, um, get some collective uh, responses to be shared with from that collective perspective as well. Absolutely. And, and uh, just to say something else about sort of the uh, career lattices as they exist today in connection to the leveling of um, the first draft, I think it's also important to point out that it also lays the foundation for compensation. Mm -hmm. That we, what we also see in career lattices is not only that the, um, the levels don't indicate um, distinct scope of practices, we also see that there is no correlation with compensation. And so another benefit of being very clear about the depth of preparation as well as the responsibilities is also then justifies the, and makes a stronger case for compensation. So the compensation will be aligned to the responsibilities of the individual as well as the depth of the preparation. And the competencies of the Absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. Good to know. All right. And I want to encourage folks who are f following our policy chats to attend Leadership Connections because um, Marika will be back uh, and we will be having a public policy forum at Leadership Connections on May 11th. And the focus of that session will be looking at the role of program leaders in relation to power to the profession. So um, stay tuned for the next chapter in person um, and come to Leadership Connections to uh, ask your questions of Marika and others head on. So thank you very much, Marika, for participating in this series. And I look forward to our continued work together supporting Absolutely and empowering the profession. Absolutely, thanks Terry for this opportunity. Thanks to Marika for joining us and thanks to you for watching. Join the conversation with Terry and Marika in person at Leadership Connections National Conference. In the meantime, what questions do you have about power to the profession? Tell us in the comments section below. Until next time.